Hello everyone and welcome to your Glass Note video report for week 44, 2022. So today we're looking at uh, Bitcoin really hammering out what could be a Bitcoin bottom. It certainly has many of the semblances to previous bear markets. So we're going to explore some of the on-chain data that really does look like almost a textbook Bitcoin bottom. Um, now that doesn't mean that it will be the bottom. Um, but what it does mean is that it certainly looks like all the previous ones with some caveats. We're not quite there yet. And we are going to look at that transition back into a bull as we go through the series. So as I mentioned, uh, we have seen this. I mean, we saw a rally up above 20,000 this week, and that was significant because it's a psychological level. We have stuck there so far. Um, however, what I really want to explore today is the overall supply redistribution. So a Bitcoin bottom, really any kind of market floor is only going to get established when you essentially reach seller exhaustion. You need to flush out literally everyone who is going to sell, which means that there's kind of only one side left, people who are willing to buy. Now, this generally takes prices down significantly, over 75% in our particular case, um, but you get this transfer of ownership. And over the course of a bear market, the coins are the same, but they've changed hands. It's the ownership structure that matters. They may go through multiple people. They may go through multiple traders, investors, people who buy the dip, realize it's not the dip, sell out, until eventually they get taken off the market by a hodler. And this takes time. Bear markets are a process. It does take time to get there. So we're going to talk through these dynamics and how it actually has played out, both in this cycle, but necessarily comparing it back to previous cycles. So we can really compare that baseline and explore what it may look like to actually transition back at the other side of a bear. So really seeing what some of those green shoots may look like. What does it look like when the market starts to repair itself and you get a bit of momentum? Uh, and for those who are short on time, we are not quite there yet. There's Even though there's a lot of signals that we may well have punched the bottom, it's possible that we still have duration and time as the pain ahead of us because both financial pain, meaning price down, but also boredom, peak apathy, sideways, boring markets, is also a form of pain. People just lose interest and they go, that's it, I've had enough of this Bitcoin thing, get me out. So we're going to explore it from all these different angles. Let's get started. So as I mentioned in the intro, we've seen a break back above the 20,000 level and we are trading sideways over the last couple of uh, last couple of days. So it is a good sign, but again, we are still within a macro. This is a three-month scale. Let's go on a two-year basis. It's still a pretty nasty looking bear. And really, this is nothing yet to write home about. So we really, we have seen some green shoots um, and remember, you just don't know when a bottom is in until you're well and truly after the fact. And for those of you who are around for 20, 2019, let me actually zoom out one more time, everybody thought that this was the end of the bear. And then we had another year ahead of us, right? And then a, a, a sell-off back down to 3,800. So the market can and will do whatever it wants, um, but we are in this process of what could be a bottom, and we're going to explore this from a number of different angles. So the first one, consider this to be the impact, the first sell-off, the major kind of um, flush out of that purge of all those sellers. In this instance, it was a deleveraging event that we saw back here in June, um, uh, sorry, in July. Um, this is essentially where we saw an enormous amount of deleveraging across lenders, and um, uh, there was an enormous amount of BTC that was forced sold onto the market. Now, in previous bear markets, this kind of initial impact that actually puts in the bottom, which you just simply don't know. For those of you who are back here, everybody was calling for $1,000 BTC back here in uh, 2018. Um, and then we really formed this bottom for about six months before breaking to 14, entered a second bear. And here was our second phase of impact back here in uh, March 2020. So what these purple bands are showing is two things, that the spot price traded down below the realized price in orange. So this is really looking at the average acquisition price for all coins in the supply, the average cost basis, what we generally refer to it as. And we also have here the Mayer multiple multiplied by 0.6. So what that basically means is that price is trading at a 40% discount to the 200 day moving average. So it's a combination of a on-chain model, the realized price, and the Mayer multiple with a 0.6 multiplier on, uh, upon that. And what that's really picking up is these massive overstretches to the downside. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the bottom is gonna be in, but you can see that we had a very similar impact in 2018, a similar impact here in uh, March, 2020. And we spent about 35 days, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, trading below this. So a very, very similar start to that bottom formation. Now, we can also look at these models here where we're pricing it between the realized price again in orange and another model here in uh, in blue called the balance price. 
Now the balance price is another on-chain model and it's really capturing, so where the realized price is what we call a volume weighted, an on-chain volume weighted moving average, the balance price is both an on-chain volume and time weighted. It also includes the time that those coins were spent. So the other way to think about it is basically the price that um, people acquired their coins for minus the amount of time that they spent out of the system. So it's trying to capture where those hodlers are as a floor type model. Now, what really matters here is that in previous bear markets, we traded between the, uh, the, the orange line here and the blue curve. This was kind of where we spent most of our bear market floor period. We, we did revisit it in March 2020, but as you can see, we've essentially traded within that very same range. So we're basically consolidating within these two on-chain models that are very much based on both volume and time in terms of hodler time. So this is really kind of our framework, and we're going to use this concept. So imagine all of the time that we spend between these two pricing models. Let's just assume, let's imagine moving forward that this is in fact bottom formation. What we really care about, because pricing models are just pricing models, they can break all the time. Um, they're not really of the level of reliability as something compared to supply. When we actually look at how much supply is moving around, that gives us a whole lot more information because this is really a pricing model based on previous events, whereas the actual supply dynamic shows us how much has actually been distributed, how much of a change of ownership has really happened. And this is where the URPD steps in. And this is just such a powerful tool. What this is looking at is all of the coins in the supply. Each bar height is basically how many coins. You can see here 610,000, 820,000, 800,000. A huge amount of coins at these particular price buckets. Now, as you can expect, this gray bar here is our current level. It's uh, 20,600. But you can see here, I mean, it stands out. We have a very, very large set of, uh, of bars here. There's been an enormous changing of hands down here in this consolidation range. Now, again, for those of you who've been watching these videos for, well, it'd probably take us back to April 2021, you will remember that we were talking about a top-heavy market back then. We were at 60,000. This node was up here, and we had very little volume below it. What that signified is that we essentially had a whole lot of coins that if price went below it, they'd all be in loss and they may become a sell hazard. Well, right now, this is essentially the exact opposite. We have a bottom heavy market. A huge amount of coins have been redistributed to lower prices. Those owners have a much lower cost basis. Of course, they may, may go lower. We have to always keep these things in mind, but we have a holder base with a much lower cost basis. And now that we have this gray bar sitting at the top end of this range, the same way that a top heavy market is now in loss and thus potentially at risk of selling because of that financial pain, here they're in profit. So the same concept applies. They may start taking profits. And we're actually gonna look at a couple of metrics that describe that. That's what you want to see. You wanna see profits taken in the market and there be enough demand to actually push through it. So we have to really prove that. We've got the foundation and we're within those pricing models. We've got the foundation. What we need to see is, can it stick the landing? This is really the important thing. Now, with that frame of reference, what we're looking at here is two different sets of charts. On the left hand, so, so the top row here is the 2018 market. So when we collapse down into that pricing range is shown here, and note how all of this supply, note how there was almost, no, almost none in the three to $4,000 range. And then here we are, after that, that uh, um, entire consolidation process, look how much volume was redistributed from all the way up here down into this range. So this is showing a changing of ownership, a capitulation, somebody capitulated, somebody else stepped in and a floor was established. Now for reference, this was something on the order of about, let me just check my numbers here. This was about 20.1% of the supply was acquired down in this range. So actually no, so let me get my number. Uh, that's for our current range, 22.7%, sorry. So the, the amount of coins between this point and this point was 22.7% of the entire supply was redistributed. Now this is our current market. You can see very similar. We had almost none on that first entry down into that 20,000 range back in June. We had almost no coins down there. And now look at this enormous volume node that we've got that started to establish itself. Now, what we're looking at here is about 14% of the supply. So compared to 22, so we haven't had the same amount of coin distribution, but it is still significant. 14% of the supply being transferred from somewhere else down to this level is still a fairly healthy thing to see. 
Now, one thing to note, note how there's very few all-time high buyers left in the 2018 cycle. We still have quite a few. And that's why we're going to focus on the long-term holders because most of these coins up here at the 40, 50, 60,000 realm, they're going to be long-term holder supplies. We're going to spend a bit of time looking at them in a, in a second. Now, this is a metric that we've developed um, uh, called, this is basically just the percent of supply and profit. And as you can see at bull market highs, this thing will go green, basically signifying that there's over 80% of the supply that's in profit, right? So that's essentially at all time highs, you're going to go between 80% and 100%. So it gives you that buffer zone. Um, during the very, very bottoms of bear markets, you're going to have less than 55% of the supply and profit. Um, so what we're looking for here is basically that transition in and out of bull market tops all the way down to bear market bottoms. So let's pull this into our five-year chart so we can zoom in. And what we can really see here is that we are in the process. Note here this large jump. Now, we've only rallied to the mid-20,000s. We're only just above the recent consolidation range, as we saw in our URPD chart. But notice how much the percent supply and profit has moved. This is significant. So what you can see is at the bottom of these bear markets, once all these coins have been reaccumulated at lower prices, a very small increase in price puts them all back into profit. It only has to go one cent above, and now those coins are back in profit. So what we generally see is at the bottom of a bear market rally, when we've finally had all of this consolidation happen, as we rally out of a bear market floor, we have a very, very large and sharp increase in the percent supply and profit. And that gives us an indication of just how many coins have actually been redistributed down at that level. So at the moment, we do have a spring higher. We're only just testing the bottom of that range that would otherwise signify we may be exiting the floor. But again, we have to stick the landing. This is kind of a very initial indicator, and we have to watch and see how this plays out over the coming weeks. So there's a first green shoot, but it's not necessarily saying that it's time to rally. So we're seeing that very, very first signal. We'll pay attention to this in coming weeks. Now, I mentioned the long-term holders, and uh, this cohort, um, what's quite interesting about the current market cycle, and we see this in all of our previous bears, the blue curve is our realized price for long-term holders, the average price at which they acquired their coins. Now, long-term holders have been here for over five months. That includes people who bought back here in January and February and March, and they weathered the downs and the ups and the all-time highs and the sell-offs and the deleveragings and the minor collapses and the Celsius and all these things. So these long-term holders, they've, they've been through the ringer, right? They've seen a whole lot of chaos. They've been through all the ups and downs. They could even come from the previous cycle. They've been there the whole time. And yet their cost basis, the average price at which long-term holders acquired their coins, note how it's above the average of the market, happened back here in 2018 too. This means that even if you went through the entire washing machine of the 2021-22 cycle or more, you have actually underperformed on average you have underperformed the average market. Sounds like max pain, doesn't it? Like going through all of that chaos and essentially if you had have entered the market yesterday, you'd be in a better position. Kind of tough, but that's how markets work. They have to go through, and this is where the hodler is forged, really. The hodler is the process of actually going through all this volatility. And that is why Bitcoin has these very, very strong holders. It's why we actually look at the hodlers as a cohort because even though they've gone through that pain, we're basically at the point in time where most people who have semi-weak hands are probably close to capitulating or in the process of capitulating as we speak. So we're kind of in that phase where we've seen this before. As you can see in 2018, this actually lasted for quite some time and not only picked up before the capitulation, all the way through it and then actually back out the other side. So it takes time for this metric to reset. As you can see, we entered back here in, uh, in early July, and we've been under here essentially for about four or five months now. So you can kind of see where we are in this mix, but it has been down here for some time longer. And just to really hammer that point home, what we're comparing here in the red is the long-term holder percent supply and profit versus in blue, the total supply and profit. And as you can see, these breaks above is generally synonymous when we're getting close to the end of a bear. And the reason for this is that long-term holder supply takes time to mature. But as I mentioned, these large rallies higher, when we get a very small price increase, but lots of coins go back into profit, that's generally a very, very good signal that we actually do have some kind of strength in the market and that bottom accumulation has taken place. And as you can see, we're testing it. 
but we haven't yet broken it. So it's another one of those signals that's very, very close. We have to then see if we can stick the landing. Now, the last couple of metrics I want to look at, that was all about the unrealized value, how much coin has been redistributed and how much profit do people hold in that current circumstance. What we're looking at here is the realized side. This is the actual spending that's going on. So rather than looking at the coins that people hold, here we're looking at what is the amount of spending that's going on. Now, I mentioned earlier that we're looking for seller exhaustion. Now, seller exhaustion generally is coincident with losses that we stop realizing losses. There's no more top buyers. People who bought higher and are selling lower are essentially done. So that's what we mean when we talk about realized losses, people who acquired their coins higher and are spending at a lower price. And what this metric does, the realized profit loss ratio, I actually discovered this myself very recently. It's become one of my new favorite metrics. I actually look at this all the time. Um, so strong recommend to jump in here and have a look at this. Basically, when this is green, it means that more profits are being realized than losses. And when it's red, vice versa, more losses than profits. So a break above one is essentially a tipping point. It's showing that there are more profits than losses now. And as you can see, that's generally as you get close to seller exhaustion. There's not many people with losses left. And also a bunch of people have bought coins at the bottom and are taking a little bit off the top. So you're starting to see that transition back towards a healthier market where sellers are exhausted and demand's coming in to absorb some profits, which makes people generally feel better. They're more likely to bring their friends into an asset when they're having a good time and making money. Um, whereas when it's, uh, it's down only, uh, it's pretty hard to convince people. You may have been through that. I certainly have. And just to really close that out, this model here is looking at the cumulative realized, realized losses, these large periods, these quarterly periods of, uh, of realized loss in the dark red. And then the yearly is basically showing that longer term average. Now you can see that as we entered the 2018 bear, we had a huge initial capitulation followed by the final ultimate capitulation event that we saw back here in November, 2018. So a huge amount of culminating losses, but note that the, the yearly capped out and started trending lower. Even though price was sideways, we had a reduction in the losses being realized. That's seller exhaustion. We're seeing less losses over the long term, even though price is still trading sideways. So we had our first capitulation. I would actually say this is the first one we had back in May, June, July, 2021. And here's our second much, much larger capitulation on the scale of these two back here in 2018. But note how our yearly has not yet turned over. So it goes along with many of those metrics that we certainly have a lot of symbols that look like this could be a bear market floor. That final piece that's missing, let's say two pieces, is complete and total seller exhaustion. We're still in the process of working through that. And the other one is duration. And both of those things generally come hand in hand. So we really need to see if this hodler strength that we can see, this support floor that's been established down in the 18, 19,000, it is quite important that that holds because if that falls, all those coins that got reaccumulated down there are suddenly in a loss. And then you end up in a position where it's like, ah, oh, maybe that becomes additional sell side because they're back underwater, right? And that's kind of that psychological loss of support. Conversely, we may well be closer to that period of time where sellers are approaching exhaustion, not there yet, but they're getting close. And the hodlers have clearly stepped in down here. So it's very much a competing tug of war. This is the beauty of studying, um, studying supply and demand dynamics in Bitcoin. We can basically see it and map it all out. Um, and that's half the fun, trying to turn uh, information and, uh, and data into something that's actually actionable and uh, insights to go with it. So thanks everyone for jumping in. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it looks like many symbols and many, uh, many metrics are very, very similar to previous bear markets. We're just missing those two components of complete and total seller exhaustion and duration. And time pain is often a really, really good tool um, in bear markets. It just takes time. Bear markets are a process, not a result. And, uh, you know, the goal is to, to survive and stick in there for the long term. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. See you then. Cheers.